started. We're going to talk a little bit now. And um, I started with a word that I knew you would understand. All right? The word I have on my paper here is contagious. And I started with the word contagious because everybody in this room knows what that word means. We may have not everybody a couple of years ago, but even our children, they know the word contagious, right? And, it, and the word contagious means something that spreads from one person to another. Something that's, right? We got it. And if you allow God to put in you, as we look towards this year and the new name and everything we're changing, if you allow God to put in you and let God put in you and let it come through you, let him put it in you, let him put it through you, you will become as contagious as a virus. You will become contagious, and we will become the contagious church because together we can revive an oppressed people. Together we can revive a depressed people, right? Together we can revive confused people. Together we can set fearful people loose. We can revive people who are locked in to fear. We can do this together. We are revived church, and we are contagious with the things of God. If we'll just take what we have and start letting it go through us, we will find that we can do this. And we are on a mission. We're on a mission. We do not want to just make church attenders. We don't want church attenders. We want you here. But we're not to make you a church attender. As you've heard said through the weeks, we are here and I love this phrase, we are here to make fully devoted Jesus followers. Now that's a big phrase. That's a big statement, especially in this world, where we are in the world, where we are in our nation, and since I live in the church world, right? I mean, this is where I live, where I've lived for so long, I watch what happens in churches. What are other churches doing? What are other churches saying? What's being preached? I don't let it change what I preach, I'm just interested kind of where, the, where it kind of flows, you know. And uh, I can kind of tell you right now that there's not a whole lot of interest in preaching and trying to make people devoted. There's a lot of preaching going on, but not too many people are trying to get others devoted to Jesus. They're using Jesus and his messages and his ways to kind of uh, make people feel better about themselves. Because a lot of people, that's all they want. They don't want to be devoted to somebody else. They just want to feel better about themselves. So we build churches that help people be themselves and feel better about it. Which is odd then to us, but think about it, how odd it is to somebody else who's been going to a church like that for 10 years and walks in here and all of a sudden we say, you know what, we want to teach you to be devoted to somebody else and forget yourself. We're going to teach you how to lose yourself because you're the problem. You're making yourself miserable. And Jesus is going to fix you if you are willing to become devoted to him. So we're here to make you to forget yourself and be devoted to somebody else. And to most people who have been going to church for a long time at other places, that's going to be foreign to them. It's not that the other places are bad. It's not that we're better. We're just different. We have a mission. We've stated it clearly. We are here to make you fully devoted to Jesus. I hope that's okay because that's what we're going to do. That's what we plan to do. That's our mission. One of them. Okay? So don't be surprised if we head that direction. But don't be surprised if you go that direction that your life gets a whole lot better. Fully devoted followers of Jesus. That's not the goal of most churches, I know, but, and I understand it. I've always been a little peeved at churches that basically they just want attenders and tithers. And I used to really kind of get bothered by it when I uh, used to hang out a little bit more with pastors and realize they really didn't care if the people showed up as long as they sent their tithe in. And that bugged me, you know, because I, I like us getting together. Just one of my things, I guess. So being devoted, huh? Being devoted to someone else, it, it's, it looks good in the sentence. It looks good in our mission. But it's a big task. 
We're not very good at it in our country, maybe not in any country right now. You know, you go to a wedding, you watch them walk down, and everybody's happy and smiles and taking pictures. But, you know, when you've been around a while, you kind of go, eh, I hope you can do this. Because you just kind of said you're willing to be devoted to that other person. And who's your example? How many people do you know actually do that? They actually pull it off, being devoted to somebody else. Then take it a step further, they're devoted to Jesus. Really devoted. It's a big step, but it needs to be done. So Paul was really concerned about the Corinthian church. And one of my favorite scriptures to teach and learn and read. And he said this. He said, I'm really concerned about the, you, you believers, they were believers, that just as Eve, how many know who that is? Yeah, heard of her at least. Um, that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent, that you, these are believers, that you will become deceived and wander away from a pure and sincere devotion to Christ. Big worry of his, big concern. He knows how it works. He started churches, he, he led churches. His life was church, basically, other than you know Jesus and God and the kingdom. But he, he, he talked about how, how he, he longed and, and worked for churches to thrive in the Lord. And so one of his big concerns was he knew they wouldn't thrive if they got deceived and lost their pure and sincere devotion. It's a powerful, powerful thing in our lives. Devotion to Jesus. One of the things I like uh, uh, to say to people sometimes is, you know, loving God is not an option. You do know that, don't you? It is a commandment. <laughs> I, like, I used to like it a... Uh, Growing up in a more traditional church, there was always those people that said, well, I just be you, you don't need to be saved or born again. I think you just need to follow the commandments. And I fell for that too. Did you fall for it sometimes? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. We just, just need to do the commandments. There was one thing wrong with that. I didn't know them. And I knew, and right then I should have known that people are failing at it because we're commanded to love God with all our heart. All. I understood the word all, but I just didn't put it to use and realize how failing the church was, churches are, because we're not loving God. We fail right away. It's not an option. Devotion to Jesus is not an option. Just say that word with me, devotion. devotion. You know, it's, it's so powerful that we can trace the lack of devotion to Jesus and maybe even to each other through so many problems. Do you know, uh, kids today have a lot of problems. I suppose kids have always had problems, but um, there's a lot of them today. There's a lot of emotional, there's a lot of spiritual problems, and the age gets, seems to get younger all the time, you know. And many parents can't figure out why. Or maybe teachers can't figure out why. Or grandparents can't figure out why. And I've watched it for a few years and realized that one of the reasons that kids struggle in so many ways, and you could just name it, maybe, maybe they just can't sleep at night, or maybe they have bad dreams, or maybe they need to be on a medication, or what, whatever, 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 is that they're under such pressure because we've give, given them so many options. Their life is full of options, you know? Now, imagine your life and how many options you have. We had a, um, when this snow thing came, then snow fell and, you know, and all of a sudden we, we were home. And uh, so we decided, we said, uh, do you want to watch TV or something? We don't do that that much. And uh, I thought maybe I could find a movie that a girl would like. <laughs> so I, was, I turned it on, you know, and I finally just gave up. I mean, there are just too many options. I mean, it took me so long. I'm just going through lists and lists and lists and lists. 
options. And finally, I just soon watched the news or something. I didn't took away all my options. It was stressful. It wasn't any fun anymore. I don't know what to watch. I guess I should have gone to that line that says, we'll pick something for you. <laughs> now, now take that and put it on a five, six, seven-year-old who has a phone and a tablet and all those things, and now they have to make choices all day long. What am I going to watch? What am I going to play? What's good for me? What's wrong for me? What's right for me? Is this? And if they're a Christian kid, is this right? Is this wrong? Is this sin? And that's such stress for children today to have to choose all those choices. And, of course, parents are busy. They're busy. They, they're having to make all the choices, too. So it's just this terrible stress. And we don't know how to get out of it. We don't even, well, we don't even think about it. And then along comes somebody. Hopefully, we can do this. And we just restructure a life. And says, so let's just back up here a minute. And we're not going to take all those things away. We're not going to say they're bad. We're not going to start a bonfire and throw them all in there. But we're going to just restructure our thinking. And we're going to start being devoted to something else besides entertainment and gadgets and play. And, and we're going to start being like the Bible does. And we're going to try to reset ourselves to be devoted to Christ. We may not know what it's like. We may not even know how to do it. We're not going to throw our phones away. And it doesn't mean you can't ever play a game or whatever. But our devotion is not going to be to those things that cause us so much stress. Because being devoted to Christ doesn't cause you stress. If you do it right, life gets easier and light, right? His yoke, there is a yoke, but it's easy and light. And so think about that. And I'm not just saying about kids, teenagers, of course, and adults. Very stressed life. And oftentimes I think about it. As stressed as people are right now, I mean, it wouldn't take much more just for some of them just to go over the top. One more thing, you know, one more thing. So I thought about this name and Revive Church and Revive KC and all the we're doing. We got our shirts on today and we got refreshments afterwards and all these things I've told you about and all the things going on in the world. And I thought, if I could just get one scripture to send you away that you could have the rest of the year prepared in your head and mind, fully loaded to tell people why people out there need to be in here. One scripture. We're all set to go. So... As I start thinking about it, didn't know if I could find the one, but start thinking about it. So I thought, well, I'll prepare myself. So I picked up my phone and my Bible. I know you wouldn't think those two should go together like it's almost the devil in heaven in two hands. But so I picked up my phone and I started reading the headlines just yesterday, late in the afternoon yesterday. And uh, on my phone were headlines like impending war. Uh, inflation up to double digits, and if you don't know what that is, some of you are old enough to my uh, close to my age. You remember it was no fun. Double digit inflation, everything costs more. So, uh, inflation. Our government is in debt into the trillions and still printing more money, wanting to print more money than it has. There's a strong movement to end democracy in our country. Some are wanting to take, well, have taken free speech away. And we're moving toward, I hope we move away, but we're moving toward government-controlled education. And that was just about this much, like, not even a whole page, I don't think, of news. That's just to name a few. And I saw all those things, and that is happening now in our country. Things like that. That's just to name a few things. So with that in mind, then I thought, okay, there's my phone in one hand. Now I got my Bible in the other. And we got a new name. Everything should be set. But how do we say to people quickly, with all that going on, why people out there need to be in here? 
What do I believe? And I want to stress it with you. What do you believe? Do you absolutely believe that people out there need to be in here? I do, but of course I do. I've given my whole life to do this. Of course I do. But I want to help you believe with the world going like it is, scary as it is, people are stressed because it doesn't feel right to a lot of people, if you know what I mean. What do I do? What scripture can I choose about in here? I thought, well, I I can't choose a scripture about worship because that's too narrow. It's not going to get them. It's not going to make it. Or or come in here because here, in here. I mean, this is what people do, churches do. But uh, our worship is great. Come to our church. Come to our church. You need to be in here because you need some new friends. That's true. You can make new friends. But it just doesn't grab it, right? It just doesn't hit double-digit inflation or whatever. It just doesn't make sense to say, we might be having an impending war, but you might be able to come here and find a wife. What? Huh? We can't try to convince people that we're the best, because that's not right we can't try to say we're better because that's not right we can't even tell people that we're good at everything because we're not we're good at a lot of things but as soon as we get good at a lot of things there's always going to be another church that gets gooder at something else right and they'll do it better than we do it and we'll realize they're doing it better than we do it and so then we'll look at it and say maybe we should do what they're doing because they're doing better than we're doing And we'll do things better than they're doing. So I can't try to convince that we're better or best or we do things all the time better. But still, I thought we need one scripture that we absolutely believe and why Revive Church is not just our name. It is who we are and it's what we do and it's the reason that you out there or somebody out there, or people you know out there need to be in here with our changing world, our changing economy, our changing thoughts, our, everything going like it is. One verse, one scripture, that in an uncertain world, and I don't know if you feel it's uncertain, a lot of people do. In an uncertain world, what can you say to them to convince them that they need to be in here. And suddenly when I thought all through this and I had my Bible, I put down my phone, had my Bible in hand, and suddenly it just came to me. And I'm going to tell it to you. Suddenly it just over flooded me. One line that I can say to the whole world that I believe why they should be in here. Because my God shall supply your every need. That's why. That's it. That's why you need to be in here. Inflation, war, taxes, double digit, trillion this, trillion that, democracy, anything you can name, my God shall supply your every need. You better get in. He supplies. Our God is a supply God. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, he supplies. And when he supplies, my God shall supply your what? Every need. So start naming them, buddy. Yeah, let's sit down. Let's have some coffee or whatever. And just name it. I'll listen. You name it. And when you're done, I'll say, let me tell you what you need to do. You need to get into this place that believes and is in the supply line of God because my God supplies your every need. He will supply. I don't know if you've got a church, a group, a family that believes that, but I go to a church that will absolutely tell you and witness to you and believe for you that my God shall supply your every need. That's every need you can name. That's why God said, I am. He said, I am. I am that I am. So will you be my prosperity? He says, I am that. Yep, I'm that. Will you be my health? Will you be my prosperity? Will you help me in my marriage? 
Will you help me in my mind? Will you help me get over something that ha- tr- happened traumatic to me when I was a child? And they can tell you a story. Let me tell you what happened to me when I was a child. And, and, and I'm, really, I'm really hurting over that. And you, all you got to do is say, let me tell you what. My God can supply that need. Because he is that. He said, I am that. I'm the healer. I'm the deliverer. I'm the helper. And my God shall supply your every need. You just need to get in a place that believes that. That believes that. You don't need to go to a place where you meet new friends. Or where they say they have this or they have better worship than that. We've got great things going here too. But something that will sustain you. Whether war breaks out. Whether the government collapses. The stock market goes down. Whatever happens. Good or bad. You need to be in the supply line of God. And we've been preaching it, teaching it, and living it since 1984. We were penniless, absolutely broke, and refused to go get any other work but preach the gospel. Refused. Said, I won't do it, and she won't do it. But we will preach the gospel. And we've been doing it all these years. And confessed it and believed it and taught people. And we will teach you. And you've got that message now. You can go out and tell. You can wear your shirt (laughs) or whatever. And all you got to do is listen. And they've got needs. They got stress. They got needs. They're afraid. And they're not giving all churches, not giving any churches probably, a thought that the answer is on this this side of those doors. It's not just us, it's all churches. They'll think about, like I said, they might think, well, I could go there and meet a girlfriend or a boyfriend and make friends, social groups, uh, get on a bowling team. There's all kinds of things that go through people's head why they'll go to that church. But that's not gonna mean much if the world changes as it looks like it might. But it'll mean everything. Or when their life falls apart or their marriage is going apart or their kids have suddenly changed and you can't figure out what to do with them anymore. Then you say, I've got an answer for you. My God shall supply. My God is a supplying God. He has a supply line in the riches of his glory. And I go to a church called Revive. And you come and you will get revived. And your confusion your fears, your relationships, whatever it is that you need. That's why you folks out there need to get in here. Short as that little line is, it works. My God has the supply line open right now. Revive Church, Kansas City. And we need to make sure our friends... And family, know about it. So you and they do not come up short as the world enters its next phase of history. Let's stand up. There you go. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We give you our life. How many would like to just turn your life over to Jesus right now? John kind of prayed it a little bit earlier, but I'll just tag it again. Pray with me then and say, Dear Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my future. I want to be a follower of Jesus all the days of my life and never change my mind. My life is yours. It is a privilege to serve you in this world. I receive that sermon. I receive God's word. God, you will supply my every need. From this day forward, I put that word in my heart and I set it into motion by faith in Jesus' name. Amen.